Uh, my name's Jason. I'm from Snohomish County, Washington. Um, I'm recently married to a beautiful wife. Uh, I currently reside in a clean and sober house in transition called m and Recovery, where I help manage 12 houses, um, which has been a really great experience in my growth. Um, I've been clean and sober since July 5th, uh, 2010, um, which has had another great impact on my life. Um, life looks pretty good right now, you know. Other than the fear of the new things going on in my life, um, I've, from day to day I get these great experiences like being able to make a video for people that really impact my life and lift me up and make me hopeful for the future. My first trauma as a child happened when I was five. Um, it's like a broken picture for me. Um, I can remember hiding under the bed and hearing the screaming and, and then an awful silence that told me my siblings were dead. Um, I spent about a year in the hospital recovering from injuries and um, learning to act like a kid again. And then I was adopted out to a great family um, in Spokane, Washington, um, which lasted a few years. Um, then a drunk driver hit my dad, dive, driving a double dump truck full of concrete and broke my dad's spine in three places and turned him into a hunchback, um, which was like watching the death of Superman for me. Um, and so instead of ending up a ward of the state or in foster care again, I ran away to the streets. It was kind of crazy. I ran away with every thought, thing I thought I would need to survive on the streets, and it ended up being a book of matches, a Swiss Army knife, and all my favorite Transformers. My first couple weeks on the streets, it was all about hunger and cold and um, fear of the unknown as it started getting dark and the city started getting quiet, and I ended up uh, meeting some girls um, who took me back to a, an abandoned house in the Seattle area um, where we uh, they were getting high and uh, I didn't want to end up back out on the street in the cold with no friends so when uh, it came time for me to use I didn't even think twice about it um, they were filling needles with uh, methamphetamine and I just took the needle and The minute it hit me, um, I was hooked because all the trauma, all the nightmares, um, all the uh, things, the cold, the hunger, all, everything just washed away. And it was the first time I could remember in my life a real euphoric feeling, you know. So it, for me, it was fantastic. And, you know, um, unfortunately, those kind of people teach you a whole bunch of habits. Um, before I hit the streets, I was a good Christian kid going to private school, um, singing in a choir. Life was normal. I didn't know what drugs were or crime was or anything, but the more people I met on the streets, the more about crime and survival I learned. My first connection was for shoplifting food, um, you know, basically stealing sandwiches or a candy bar or anything I could fit in my pockets um, to eat, just to have something to eat, you know. Um, um, and I ended up in juvenile detention where I met some for real felons, and youth, troubled youth that got me involved with gangs, car stealing. Um, which was great for me because it gave me a warm place. Uh, um, it gave me ways to stay out of the cold, stay fed, stay a part of a circle, you know. They kind of became my family. There was, at the end, I think 32 of us living in an abandoned house. All of them are dead now.
I, I didn't think from the minute my dad got hit by the drunk driver that I had any hope of a future. I believed that that was my one opportunity um, for change and it had passed me by and you know everybody tells you oh that's a troubled youth or that's a problem child or that's just a bad seed you know so you start taking these messages to heart you know and no I didn't think there was any hope for a future. Um, the more times I went to prison, the harder I became, the colder I became. Um, it's twice as terrifying when you try to think of doing anything else, you know, because it's such an unknown when you hit the streets at 12 years old. Um, that's all you know. You've never filled out a resume. You've never done the right thing at all ever in your life so it's twice as traumatizing when you do decide to get that change in your life because everything's unknown i don't have any resources i don't have any connections that's why having those resources having people supporting is mission critical to your success getting out you have to find a pro-social support network that's going to nurture you support you you cannot under any circumstances, go back to those old neighborhoods and those old lives. There were several things that really helped me at that point in my life. Um, one was a spiritual aspect, um, some Native Americans um, in the yard at an institution, the institution I was in, came up to me and said, you know, you're Native American. And I said, yeah, but I've never follow those practices or anything. I'd never um, been to a lodge or anything like that. And they're like, well, maybe you're on the wrong road. And they invited me to the sweat lodge. And that was very moving for me and very powerful, um, very humbling too. Um, then, interesting fact is, um, I was sitting in an art class um, it was called The Art of Social Transformation. And so I was scribbling in the back, like I always did, you know, just writing crazy stuff about my life. And the teacher asked me to um, see it. And they asked for a copy of it. And the next day I ended up in front of a, a lot of the uh, officers in different parts of the school. And they said, uh, we'd like to read you in front of a live audience. Which was really moving for me because it was a story about the trauma of my life and to have it expressed out loud um, in a positive way um, and really affected me. It made me feel like I could be something else. And that gave me a, a path towards education. They were pushing me towards college and giving me a series of teachers believing in me and supporting me and nurturing me. Um, all of them telling me that I had this great potential to be something else which I think we lack on the streets. We lack, uh, we're stuck in such a victim hopelessness stance that it's hard to believe we can be anything else. The last major impact came towards the end. Um, there was a program run by somebody that was an ex-felon um, coming in to show you about transition and reentry. And uh, it really had an impact on my life because he was so successful in the community. Um, I, it kind of gave me a, a clearer path on what I could potentially be when I got out. And he mentored me and uh, we were in that class for about six months learning about all the different options of release, all the different programs available out there in education included and how I could navigate into college. I think every time I go to another class, I get a little stronger, whether it's a business class or a communication class or um, resume building or just some skills, I get stronger. You know, every time I go out and do something like Christmas in the streets and, and I see that old life face up, you know, um, I remember what it's like to live, live that kind of life and it keeps me going in the right direction. But I think the most powerful event in my life is 
finding other formerly incarcerated people and other people doing great things in the community and just being around them, you know. Painting for me is where it all started. I started my life-changing events in art classes in uh, Monroe Corrections. Um, what it means to me or what it feels to me as pain is to be able to leave something behind, you know, that I hope people will remember me as the artist, as the writer, not as the felon or the homeless person, but um, creating something beautiful, you know. Um, I like acrylic painting um, because I never know how it's gonna turn out. Um, when I'm pouring the paint and it's moving around and I have some control over it, but really I have no control over it. It comes out exactly how it was meant to be and I hope that I create something beautiful. I hope that something will be sitting in somebody's home or their office and they'll remember Jason the artist or Jason the writer and not Jason the homeless or Jason the felon. Sometimes I have so many good things happening in my life, it's hard not to feel like there's some proverbial shoe falling, gonna fall, you know, I just, sometimes I find myself waiting for tragedy to strike, but you know, um, I keep moving forward and, you know, the next great event in my life happens, you know, that just on that other, um, over the next horizon, you know, just going, keep moving forward and events just keep happening and people just keep coming into my life that really inspire me and move me. So I think the future's looking pretty great actually.